Hello everybody, Gregor Artero here in Asheville, North Carolina. And I wanted to talk today about stories I have heard firsthand with people who've worked in the Black Ops Project. Some of them are people telling me directly on hand, and other, you know, hand-me-downs. Again, these are all stories, so there's nothing substantial in terms of, you know, evidence proving it. But I wanted to share these stories and how they've influenced me in terms of understanding physics and technology, because supposedly these are things they're actually working on in the field of alternative physics or black ops projects, things we don't really know about or being talked about. So this got brought up by someone I talked to a couple days ago. They had a friend who was an assistant to someone who worked at HARP, their personal assistant. The personal assistant would constantly ask, what are you guys doing? And, and tell me more about it. And he would say, I, I can't, it's classified. Well, one day he just sent her an email and it said, stop focusing on particles and just focus on light. That's all I can tell you. And this is huge. This is really important in the simplicity of it because particles is, it leads to separation the way we are observing things. And particles to me are really just manifesting out of interference patterns. Something you see in uh, what the bleep do we know. But those interference patterns exist all across the spectrum in terms of how they influence aspects of our reality. And light is this flow of information, and that we need to get back more into flow thought processes instead of point thought processes. And this opens up the door to really simplifying a way to look at physics and seeing what I've been talking about on my channel, refraction and reflection as being fundamental properties of light, things we need, really need to understand. Another story was uh, someone uh, who worked for, for the military, I'm not going to go into great detail about this um, for obvious reasons, but he saw that they used bismuth and were using pyramids to make electromagnetic transformers. The idea of a pyramid, when it's at the golden ratio, this is something I've been working with in my lab, is when it's the, th think of a cutaway of a pyramid to square and it keeps shrinking to this little point, the shrinkage of that surface area, either with a golden pyramid or a golden cone, be it a square or a circle, it's shrinking at the golden ratio. And so if you have two pyramids pointed at each other, and you take either of those square slices, in terms of a fractal cosmology, there's no difference wherever you take that square in relationship to each other. The distribution of the energy in between those two squares is going to be the same. It's a little hard to explain, but in terms of fractal cosmology with golden ratio, it doesn't matter what scale these slices of square are, the, the distance from each other and the size of them is this dynamic proportion between the two. And, that, and bismuth, bismuth is awesome. Bismuth is the first radioactive material and sometimes called the last stable material because its half-life is, I believe, half a million years. It's huge. It's also the most diamagnetic substance, uh, which is, if you want to learn more about diamagnetism, it's on my channel or go read about it. It's uh, a magnetic field in, um, it's an intrinsic magnetic field inside a substance and it pushes the external magnetic field out around it, such as the trees around us. The video How Trees Dance with Gaia explained a little bit more of this concept. And it also has the greatest Hall effect of any other material, which is this interesting polarization effect within the material. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful material. I have some in my shop, I've played around with it. So it's interesting that they're using bismuth. You don't hear much about bismuth elsewhere in terms of its electromagnetic properties, but understanding the significance of diamagnetism, we understand the significance of diamagnetism, bismuth becomes a really important material to play with. It's also been shown that in very thin layers it, it exhibits superconductive properties because of the Hall effect. Anyways, uh, what other stories? There is um, someone who was in the Navy, uh, a, a friend of mine, I think had an uncle in the Navy, uh, don't quote me on this, yeah, he, uh, they had to, they wanted to implode wires. Tesla talks about is imploding electricity, not imploding wire, imploding the electricity. And there's multiple ways to do this. One way that they were utilizing is they developed a machine that extrudes copper wire at different gauges. And so it's able to start, say, you know, a really thick gauge, like maybe like two gauge, and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it comes to a fine point and they can wrap a coil with this type of wire. And so the actual geometry of the wire is compressing 
and accelerating um, the electrical voltage. There's, there's one little interesting uh, story, a, a simple, very simple thing, but hearing that came from the US Navy, it makes perfect sense hearing this, because the people who are also telling this don't really understand physics. That's the interesting thing, is they aren't like making this up themselves. Someone told this to them, and I just happen to comprehend what they're really talking about, because they really understand the notion of an implosion, and they're telling me about this wire, but that their uncle was telling them about this. Another person came up and told me who, that they had a friend who worked in the aerospace industry in Albuquerque, and that their friend had said to them, it's all about the octogram. The octogram is so key. It's, it's fundamental to advancing our technology. And what am I wearing on my, my neck? The octogram. This has been my fundamental piece of geometry. And where did I discover the mathematical significance of the octogram? In Albuquerque, New Mexico at Tesla Tech. So there's a little interesting synchronicity. And, but the aerospace, hearing that come from someone, and that person didn't know, he said this to me because I had been working on the octogram, that he had said this to him, he really didn't understand what they meant by it, but that it was a very significant aspect, this piece of geometry, which it is. There was one other story, uh, let me think about it for a second, or was that maybe all of them, wire, business, I think those were all the stories I've heard, there, there might be more. But there's just a few of them to share with you, little side notes that might get you thinking and entertain you for this moment. So I will talk to you again. Ciao. Everyone have a good one. Bye.